Well, there you are again. Charlie Greer podcast. I do this every day. Today, talking about the death of Johnny Thunders. Uh, I'm a huge Johnny Thunders fan. If you don't know, Johnny Thunders was a guitarist of New York Dolls. Uh, influenced everybody. Years ahead of his time. A part of that secret hierarchy. You know, a lot of people don't mention Johnny as an influence, but he was the king of the slop, you know, then. Uh, he kind of gets downplayed. Oh, he's a junkie, you know, that kind of shit. But yeah, the death of Johnny Thunder, super suspicious, his death. And um, so, yeah, he died in 91. <coughs> it was April of 91. <coughs> Pardon me. In New Orleans. He had just arrived. He was supposed to be there setting up shop, you know, got to record hook up with some people and do an album. And he was on a tour of Japan. They left Japan, Japan for Thailand. I mean, and then I think he went back to New York and then he headed to uh, New Orleans. Now there's some, uh, he was there for like not even 24 hours and I found him like underneath the bed or like a, you know, a dresser, all his stuff gone. And they're gone, oh, no, he's he's just uh <laughs> and, and and on the uh autopsy he said he had advanced leukemia and that's what killed him. Advanced leukemia because he did look sick. I mean he died when he, he was only 38, man. He looked shit. But there's just some suspicious stuff um about his death. I mean, they took everything, his passport, his money. He had a ton of cash on him, his methadone supply, his everything. One thing they didn't steal was his guitar because granted, Johnny Thunder's guitar, everybody knew what it, you, you, you get pinched, you get caught. Um, <clears throat> uh, and there's just, if you got to piece stuff together. So if you watch certain documentaries about stuff, his tour manager uh, at the time, Nick, I forgot his, other, but he uh, said that, um, you know, Johnny was preparing and getting in contact to people to get in New Orleans. But then the people in New Orleans like, oh, we didn't know he was coming. Like, huh? Um, and Mink DeVille literally was living next door to where Johnny died. And supposedly Johnny was supposed to hook up with Mink, yet Mink didn't know he was there. I mean, that's just kind of um, suspicious. Yeah, so the story goes, he... Uh, Got to New Orleans. Sorry, there's something in my eye. He got to New Orleans, and um, he didn't look. He looked rough. I mean, the woman that checked him in at the hotel, and I think it's called the St. Peter's House. It's a small little hotel. It isn't like nice or anything. It's like in the French Quarter. She thought he was going to pass out and die right then and there. He's like, he looked pale, like a ghost, and um, she actually had like the cab guy that dropped him off help him with his stuff, like to the room. And supposedly, now granted, you know, he was hanging out, you know, had his window open in because the window's like open right to the, you know, French Quarter. And people recognized him. was like, hey, come with us. So he went to a bar with these like shady locals. And um, went to a few bars, like did some bar hopping. I guess got back to the hotel and there was something going on. They were partying in his room or whatever. And so they, the front desk called and said, Hey, you got to keep it down, you know? And he was like, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. You know what? I'll come up and I'll talk. I'll come see you. Know? And he never did. The next morning when they went to like, you check out or clean the room, they found him room in disarray. Again, all his stuff gone. Um, and like a syringe in the, in the toilet. Now there's all kinds of rumors. People said like, oh, they dosed him with acid and this and that. But that would that really uh oh and they said he was like bit like a pretzel. He was like, oh poor Johnny. But the, on in the in the um in the uh autopsy, there was like he had drugs in his system, but it was just just trace amount, like wasn't enough to kill someone. Um and again, it's listed as advanced leukemia. He died leukemia. 
So, but okay, then 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 the the coroner, the guy that did the um autopsy, he was shady. He got caught up in some stuff that are like, and I guess they were like, oh, it's just another junkie, New Orleans. He can't hear that. He's just dead. I mean, they didn't investigate. They're like, look, his passport's gone. He had like, I forgot how many, 60 grand cash on him. He had like a year supply of methadone. You know, that's expensive. So he, huh? All his silk suits and whatever he had, gone. They stole everything. Stuffed him under a... Uh, say if you're dying of advanced leukemia, how do you get stuffed under like a, a dresser? All bent around, you know. And supposedly, Mink DeVille said that people around the neighborhood were wearing his clothes, like these shady people. Like after it happened, like the weeks after, they're like wearing hats and it's just like, what? Did they like steal his shit and have like a yard sale or something? And why didn't anybody investigate? I mean, look, it's back in 91. Like, why didn't they do like a 48 hours or is it because he was a junkie recovering junkie? And his tour mentor said some kind of sketchy stuff about why they went to Thailand. Cause I guess Thailand it, drugs are cheap. And um, this is what he said. He said they got there and they, he, he said they bought, Johnny bought so much heroin. It was like all, I mean, how much can you buy though? He said it was everywhere. And I guess the hotel kind of, you know, saw, saw, thought something was up. And they approached him and said, oh, when are you guys leaving? When are you checking out? And he told him, but he actually gave, uh, they left a day early just to not, so they, you know, and they all left separately. So it's like, okay, let's just take that for, you know, his word. So where, how did they transport the, the heroin if he had all this heroin? You know? uh, did they put it in the road cases? Did they have road cases? I mean, you know, what's going on? You just can't ship that stuff, you know. And why would he say that? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't get it. And he said, the, the, the tour manager said that last tour, all he was listening to was like Mink DeVille's solo album and talking about he was getting there. He's going to record with Doc, uh, Dr. John and Mink DeVille and this, that, do this kind of like bluesy kind of thing. Album, I should say. But Mink DeVille says, I, I didn't know he was in town. Like, how's that? Were they all just kind of scared? Like, oh, shit. They can do it to Johnny. They can do it. And again, I mean, the villa like, lived next door. Like he was right next door to the St. Peter's house. He saw that morning he was outside playing guitar. He saw them pull out a body. He was like, wonder what the hell? He said it was like oh, an old politician or something that died. And then somebody came up to me like, hey, you're a rock star. You know, saying this to me. And someone from the hotel came up to him like, hey, you're a rock star. Uh, you know Johnny Thunders? He died. Like, Johnny Thunders? You know. There's just so much suspicious stuff. And, and Johnny's sister tried to get the case open and tried to get people. They wouldn't even, you know, return her phone calls. And this is a suspicious death. Even if he did, let's just say like he died from uh, leukemia. Somebody went in there and stole all of his shit. That's a crime. Nah, it's just a dead junkie, you know, just uh, who cares? Yes, that's it. And why would you need his passport? See, that's weird. That's what like um, hitmen do. They'll need to take a to prove that they. They'll go do a hit, take their ID, your passport, whatever it is, and bring like, hey, I see, I did it. I was there. How would I not have? You know, that was, that's old. Shit, they've been doing that forever. Did he have all that heroin? I mean, obviously, he went back to New York first, then to New Orleans. Did he sell most of it there and bring some to New Orleans? Who knows? Um, they've never done any kind of, and people aren't really talking that no. I'm sure people know. Other people kind of like, well, but there's been so much time. How many years is that? Over 30 years that he's been dead? Don't you think that somebody would come forward and be like, well, see, there was a different time, and I was in a bad place in my life, and Mm -mm. 
Make DeVille act and play dumb. I don't know. So I, I mean, I, maybe I and he even said, hey, they, I can't talk about this. This is dangerous. Um, there It's in Lekowski's The Last Rock and Roll Movie. There's like 12 versions of it. It's edited different, but I suggest you watch one of them or all of them. And you can see those interviews with them. Um, uh, Mink, and that part of New Orleans again, it's no, it's the French Quarter, it's like the rough part of the French Quarter. Uh, it's just all the time, you know. Um, and people saw him. Matter of fact, he was they recognized him that night. He went out, Johnny, that night he got into New Orleans, and uh, they were following. He's like, you know, the Pied Piper, all these dudes. Hey, And he knew people. I'm sure he called people. That's what I think. People haven't come forward. They're like, oh, he was by himself. And then don't you think he'd call some people? Don't you think that like he wasn't even there 24 hours? And um, and don't you think it's suspicious that something was going on? Was it even Johnny that answered the phone? Like they said, like, hey, they sounded like there was a fight or a party or something going on. And the hotel clerk said, hey, you guys got to keep it down. Oh, I'll come up and speak with you. Was it even Johnny that said that? Was it someone else? Supposedly there's these two brothers that kind of, that was their kind of area and they did cry. They ended up in prison. Like did they, was it, huh? Was that what happened? Oh uh, yeah. I'm Johnny Thunders. We'll be right up and this grab all this shit and go. And nobody saw anything. Those rooms are so small and they're connected in that little hallway. Come on, man. Somebody saw something. Somebody probably, I don't know. And I get that too, but shit. Can't you leave like an anonymous note, you know? X, signed X, who, who knows? And then again, why would you want Johnny Thunders dead? Basically two reasons. One, you're just wild people. He's out. He might have showed them this cash or whatever. Then they just robbed him. Or two, he did have drugs. And... um you know, it's the same thing. These wild people stole, you know, I don't know. It's suspicious. Um, he, uh, it's a shame that he didn't even have like a record contract at the time of his death. After his death, I think it was Capitol Records released his album, So Alone. It had been released in Europe. Again, he didn't, nobody would do, I get it. He was kind of a wild man, you know, but aren't all rock stars wild men? You know, that's not that's not an excuse. But well, he was, um, you know, he. Uh, I mean, come on. My lighting's horrible. I'm sorry. Uh, and I don't know. And 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 also Arthur Killer Kane, the bass player of the New York Dolls, because Johnny was in the New York Dolls. He died of leukemia. And it kind of went fast. He said, I'm sick. They take him to the hospital. He died like that night of advanced leukemia. What's the odds of two people in the same band dying of leukemia? Has that ever happened before? I mean, is it just like a strange, mysterious world? And those things just kind of, there's just suspicious stuff going on. Um, I have a gut feeling that something did right. Of course it didn't right. Pardon me. He died in a hotel stuffed under a, a dresser. Just got there. Wasn't there someone else? I mean, wasn't there? There's got to be. There's got to be people that know. I mean, a lot of them are dying. They need to be speaking up because, I mean, uh, but wouldn't someone else, like, wouldn't you hire? And I think his 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 sister did hire a private detective, and they wouldn't have anything to do with it. Or wouldn't a show, they do, they investigate so many murders of people that are like, Johnny was known. Technically, he was a rock star. In my mind, the biggest rock star, but people really don't know about Johnny. Uh, he was more like uh, underground, you know, lowbrow. Um, if you haven't listened to any Johnny stuff, go get or listen to Johnny Thunder's So Alone, that album. It came out like in 78. Great album. Can't Put Your Arm Around a Memory. That song's one of the best. I mean, he, it's in, been in movies and uh, Bob Dylan said that that was the song he wished he'd wrote. You would think that somebody would have helped out Johnny. Maybe they did, and it's just like an endless, oh, shit, but, you know. 
Was that what it was? Just dealing with the junkie who would just like steal and I don't know if he, they, this is stories I've heard, you know. Um, I've met people that talked about their band used to open for him and then he would pawn their gear after sound check and they could show up ready for the gig. I pawn my gear after the gig, we'll get it. You know what I'm saying? And then he would, he'd repeat, you know, but uh, this kind of like junkie business, you know, just stupid shit. You get, you get aggravated after a while. You're like, son of a bitch. Um, you would think suspicious. I'd love to talk to that tour guy, Nick, and be like, How many was it kilos he bought? You're saying there was all this hair? He said it was on the floor, on the shelving, and everywhere in their hotel room, like it was packed. Well, how could that be? How much money did he have? How cheap is it there in, in Thailand? And just going to Thailand, that's kind of suspicious. You, you've got, you know, you're on a tour in Japan. Hey, we're going to hit Thailand before. And one of the people in his Van, she said, good luck. Don't get arrested. Like she kind of, you know, and I think a lot of these people do a little, know a little bit more, but they just don't want to talk about it. I mean, it's been, they, sh somebody should say something. It's been so long. Don't you think that you could be like, well, I mean, again, anonymous. Post something on Reddit. Who knows? Um, and how would he, again, would you stuff it in the road case? What would you do? Wear it on you? I don't know. I'm talking about the drugs, if he bought all those drugs. And is even is that even true that he bought all those drugs? Because uh, the only information we get that from is this Nick character, his tour manager, who, uh, um, again, you know, it's a sad situation. Um, and poor Johnny, you know. And he looked ill. There are pictures of him from the, that those like he he didn't look good. Didn't he look like himself? He looked like a, a, a shit. Poor Johnny. Love you, Johnny. I mean. I've been a New York Dolls fan for like most of my life. Love Johnny Thunders. There's not that much out there on Johnny, like as far as like his, they've got like these bootlegs and he released an acoustic album, and then he released an album of, like, covers, the Copycats album, which is probably the best production of any album he did. I love So Alone. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. And everybody plays on it. Uh, Steve Marriott. Uh, I think Steve Jones even plays on it. Strange thing about Steve Marriott, he was in Humble Pie. He died, like, within a week of Johnny. He died in a fire and Johnny, I don't, I forgot which one died first, but they died within like a six, seven days of each other. That's kind of suspicious too. And how Steve died. He like, Oh, left a party. I had to go meet somebody at my house and he's found in a closet burn up. I mean, I don't know. Is it tied together? Is that somehow? Um, I don't know. Could be, you never know. Perhaps. I guess we never know because nobody's uh, investigating it. Again, I guess if you're like in a band and you're a rock and roller, you can just damn die. Nobody's going to care. Have you noticed like all these, it, they just don't investigate. Well, no, see, done. it's all. Go through the people. They just don't, it's like they don't get any proper respect from law enforcement I'm talking about. They don't want you to know. They don't, they just, well, it's just another dead junkie. I hate that. Um, and what about these brothers that he was hanging out with and those shady characters? Couldn't you just interview them? <clears throat> and the people walking around with his clothes. Couldn't you send like one or two detectives out and just like scope the neighborhood for a day or two and just, you know. But nothing. Like, nope, we ain't gonna. And his poor family, man. Pray for his family. Pray, pray for Johnny. Uh, his sister, she tried. I mean, they, you know, you try. If the law enforcement ain't going to help you, then what are you going to do? And they did a documentary about five years ago or so, maybe longer, about Johnny, looking for Johnny, which is great. But they just kind of skim over his death. You know, we need a deep dive. We need someone to go down that rabbit hole and, uh, 
it are there people it's been 30 years man, more than 30 years are there people still around in that area that would that neighborhood in the french quarter that would talk again are they alive is it too late is somebody writing a diary like oh i gotta get this off my chest i don't know suspicious um and where was 48 hours there's one of these shows that could have like they're looking for cases. They'll do a case about anybody, people you don't even know, you know. Why wouldn't they do Johnny? Was it because of, like, drug discrimination? They just don't want to deal with people. But they, that's all they do is investigate drug deaths. I mean, shit. I don't get it. I remember the day he died. In 91, I mean, they, they, on MTV, I was like, oh, my God. And at the time, I was working at a record store in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. And the owner was an old rocker. And he had been in Mike Monroe's band. And Mike Monroe was in Hanoi Rocks. And they're Johnny Thunders fan. And he just couldn't believe I was a Johnny Thunders fan. He's like, how do you know about Johnny? I'm like, well, duh. We kind of bonded over that. Like, I knew, like, him and I were damn near crying. But I was like, who's Johnny Thunder? Like, you know, so we started playing Johnny's music and most of the friends that I've had or band members don't have any, don't know about New York Dolls, don't like uh, the New York Dolls, don't know about Johnny Thunders. He is, you know, the secret hierarchy of rock guitarists. Like he's influenced that look that Johnny had back in the dolls. Everybody stole that from him. The whole eighties look, the Motley Cruz, all that stuff. They just look like a bunch of Johnny thunders when he was in the dolls. Um, you know, just the, the whole, his whole style, just like an old, you know, TV yellow junior, Les Paul junior double cut. Um, you know, one P 90, one volume, one tone plugged straight into a Fender Twin that's just cranked. Um, and then rock. Just go. No pedals. No, you know, tuning, you know. Uh, and he's got a unique sound. Johnny has a, a unique... When you hear his playing, it's instantly like, oh, wow, that's... Everybody steals from Johnny. Matter of fact, I had to. I stole most of my... I mean, I loved his style. Him and Jerry Nolan. I gotta, I gotta throw in Jerry Nolan, who was the drummer of the Dolls. Um, Jerry and Johnny, like they, to me, were um, just how they dressed. And then everybody started looking like that. Uh, and they really don't mention Jerry or Johnny. Some bands do. Molly Crew did. They actually said, "Hey, Nikki Six and Molly Crew's like, yeah, Johnny Thunder's my." He gave him some love. And um, but everybody from the Aerosmith, man, they were doing the dolls. Matter of fact, they had the same management at the time when the dolls and the dolls were hard to deal with. They were young, just partying. The management dropped the dolls and put the interest in Aerosmith. Um, and Aerosmith were, were basically a New York dolls like tribute. I mean, not tribute, but they were stealing from the doll. All oh, kiss everybody. The band Kiss is named after a doll so song, basically. The doll's first thing, looking for a kiss, that's what they got. Matter of fact, K Kiss, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley of Kiss were in another band called Wicked Lester, and they were kind of like a hippie ish kind of folky, you know. They went and saw the dolls, and they're like, damn, we're going to shift gears. And they did. They were signed up to Epic Records, and they said, you know what, drop us, whatever we got to do. We're, we're going to start a rock band. The whole platform, boots, and all that came from the dolls. Um, and they did admit this. I mean, they, they do give credit to the dolls. Um, but how the dolls, I mean, and who owns, again, they've not sold that many albums, but their merch alone must be, because you see everybody wearing New York dolls stuff. Who owns that merch right? Is it David Johansson? Who, the family? I don't know. Who's getting that dolls money? And why haven't they done like there's a, also there's a movie about Johnny called like Room 13 or Room 38 or something like that. It's basically a shit show. It's kind of like a cross between like a rock movie and a horror movie. It sucks. Um, 
you could watch it. I mean, it was, I, I was disappointed. I was looking forward to it. Oh, so why hasn't anybody done like a real good Johnny Thunders movie or again, a deep dive? They just kind of skim over certain things. Is it that dangerous? Is it like, I just don't want to be involved. I mean, shit. Johnny deserves better, man. The New York Dolls deserve better. Um, I love Johnny. I've actually got a custom-made Johnny Thunders replica, his 1958 TV Yellow Double Cut Junior, one of my favorite guitars ever. Um, my baby. But I don't want to be a Johnny clone, Thunders clone. For one, Johnny was small. And I'm 6'2", 200 pounds. I look now. And I just use that for my own. I would never be on stage with that guitar. I don't want to be ripping off Johnny. But in the studio, whatever I'm doing, um, that's my go-to. And I've got a, a, a hum cunt canceling P90 in it. So you don't get any of that 60 cycle hum. It's as quiet as we can be. Shockingly good. And it was like custom made in a San Gabriel Valley by some luthier and i had to i had to do, funny thing about that guitar i saw it on like craigslist or wherever i was you know and i offered the guy like two good nice telecasters and some cash and he said no nope. okay fine move on and like a month later he must have saved that email a month later he's like okay I will do the deal, the two Telecasters and the cash. And I went back to him. I was like, well, I already sold one of the Telecasters since then. And he came back. He's like, oh, that's fine. So you turned me down the first time. And basically, you're going to have. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So I got it. That was years ago. And it's a conversation piece, that guitar. And if you're looking to get some kind of like rock and roll chic on you, listen to Johnny Thunders, man. Learn some of those licks. It's basically like 50s rock and roll. He's just cranked louder. He's not He's not too advanced. I mean, I love it. And he's the king of the slop. There's a lot of like, you know, um, surf kind of, you know, like slide riffs. Uh, a lot of Chuck Berry s kind of 50s just crank though and um again a unique sound people have said this i was watching like the don i think it's in looking for johnny and they were like look when you're using a mass produced instrument and a mass produced amp it's tough to be unique meaning you're using a gibson they've made a ton of those you're using a fender they just keep on pumping those out you're just going to sound kind of the same so to be able to be unique and, and, and sound different is tough. It's all within you. It's in your hands. It's just your vibe, you know. I think one of the best songwriters ever and one of the best guitarists. And sometimes these guys that like, you know, that's saying, you know, pioneers get slaughtered, settlers prosper. It's kind of like that. It's kind of that they... uh um, Johnny influence. He still is influencing people. Um, and every so often, every 10, 15 years, there'll be a little Johnny Thunders kind of thing going on though. You know, why hasn't Gibson released a Johnny Thunders tribute? He don't give anybody a signature guitar. Now I was watching something not too long ago and they gave a YouTuber, a signature junior, like a double cut junior. It's like, he's a YouTuber, man. He hasn't done, he's not in a band. He's not, well, he's reviewing gear. Like, I collect gear. I got all these guitar shit. They will give Gibson, man. You'll give anybody a frigate. Come on. Get a hold of the estate, some of his family, whatever. You know how well that would, dude, that would, I'd buy one. No. Everybody has had a tribute guitar and this and that and the other. Epiphone, even. Come on. Which, where, where are you people? Is it because of the the, the 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 stigma of the drugs or I don't get it. Um, I don't get it, man. You would think that they'd have done by now a couple of now. It sucks. 
to this day, it's like they're, they're just not, I mean, I don't know. He didn't get the proper respect. He, um, to me, I could relate to Johnny. Forget about the drug. It has nothing to do with his drugs. I don't like that about him. It's his music. It's his style. Um, he never complained. There's not an interview him complaining about people ripping him off. And they did. They took his everything. His look, his this, his that, his that. I mean, come on. Now, he wouldn't, you're never going to see it. Ah, hey, none of that. Uh, maybe that's the New York in him. He didn't want to. But I think that, you know, the younger generation, they need to, again, they need a deep dive on this. They need to go deep. Someone needs to investigate this, which they probably won't. Um, and also, if you want to get, um, if you want to learn more about Johnny, there's a uh, author, uh, Nina Anta, Anti, anyway, Nina something. It's called In Cold Blood. I used to own multiple versions of that. She wrote a book about him. And there's stuff out there. There's the, a book about the dolls, and there's this and bootlegs, and there, there's stuff you can find. So check it out. Please like, share, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, it's in the description. There's information for Zell. I do this every day. I'm trying to do this full time so I can do more than one a day. And um, so I'll be here tomorrow. Rank like a madman. <laughs> I love y'all. Be blessed. Cheers.